Me and name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, I get more work done on the milling machine. I eventually get the bearings sorted and all put back together. And you can wait and see what you think about the end result, whether the noise is there or whether the noise is not. I'm going to do the draw. I'm going to do it now, actually. The draw for the little Banggood drill taps. As some names come in. 50 or 60 names came in this week. Put them in the bucket. I'm going to give them a good mix up. There's some real real ones in here. You can see the paper, some paper has clean, some dirty. Right, I've had a good mix up right down to the bottom. There's one. Right, the new I've got here is Guy Gator. Right, Guy, all you need to do is send me an email with an address and I'll get that little set of drill taps posted off to you. This week's draw is going to be for this hat. It's one of the ones I had made when I went to America two years ago. I found it upstairs. It's, I've got a couple of brand new ones left. Uh, so if you want a chance of winning that hat, all you have to do is send me an email, that's me, email is up there, your name goes in the bucket, if it's drawn out, I'll post it off to you anywhere in the world, completely free of charge. Don't forget, there's also a link in the description box of the video where you can go and buy a double boost hat or a jumper or a, a double boost apron or a double boost whatever you want. There's a little bit of steam wagon video in probably in part two. Uh, we took the wagon from where it lives in Beamish across to a farm where it stops in the, the winter we can work on it. Uh, show a bit of that. We actually we didn't steam it across, we took it across on the wagon, then put it in steam and we'll blow the boiler down and drain all the water out. Uh, you can't just put it away and turn it off like a, an ordinary wagon. That's quite a lot of work to do just to make it survive a winter. I do a bit of plasma cutting. Um, I cut some blades out for a lad for a woodworking machine and he wanted to make it out of brass so I do a little bit of plasma cutting on brass with I think quite reasonable results. These are the two bearings that we took out from the, the mill last week. There's absolutely nothing the matter with them. I pulled the rubber seal out, even the grease inside them is nice and clean. I repacked and re-greased them. That's not the matter with those bearings, I'm not going to replace them. I've had enough experience with bearings, there is no way that those bearings are making that noise. I think it's all down to, down to the pulley. Right, so that being said, there is some damage on the threads, the first threads damaged there. I'm going to clean that up. Clean the nut up. I was going to make a new nut, but I'm just going to clean it up because really I'll need a mill machine to to put the slots in on the new nuts. I'm going to clean it up and then I did a drone last night so I can cut out a, a circle on the plasma cutter with a four little notches in it, a bit into there, you know, to make a, a key to tighten it down with. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean up the, the damaged threads on there. I'll bring the close up lens in and show you the damage that's on it. to see the end of the thread where it's damaged, it's dinged across there. It's only the first thread and there. I could probably just turn the first thread off and that would do, but what I'll do, I'll get a little a little fine needle file and just clean them up. Just take that take that little rag off there, that one there, and that one there, and then it should it should screw back together quite nicely. This is quite a common repair I do all the time in motor trade. Uh, people tend to damage drive shaft end threads and things. And it's normally just the first couple of threads. This file's got a, a smooth edge, a safe edge, so I can put the safe edge against the good part of the thread and just gently
just carefully work your way around and you will eventually save the thread right that wasn't really tight so that took us less than for a minute to repair that thread doesn't always work as, as well as that when it's on here I think I'll spin it open just with for this to knock the little rags off there I think that's dressed out quite nicely. A little square file work in there and that would be perfect. Quite interesting that little job there. I used three different tools, which are probably the, the three most popular tools you use on a lathe. the first one that's a, a right hand knife tool used for that way and facing and that's its counterpart the left hand knife tool opposite left and right and that one there's a 45 tool used for chamfering but you can also use this for taking heavy cuts off but those three tools there are used most of the time in fact that one there bastard is probably used 90% of the time They didn't fall far, but the, the mystery steel tore cap like they always do, hit the top of the foot and they do it. And so I've got a nice flat face on there. Them little law marks in there will not make much difference really. I've pressed the toe bearings back on now, nothing spectacular there. You've got to make sure that you press on the inner race. You don't press on there, you press on the inner race. I'm holding up the lathe just so I can spin it up and stop the bearings turning just to see if it does make any noise now. So this is this is a thousand RPM and there's no noise, there's nothing there feel. A little bit of drag but it feels very nice. I've run the layers up to 2000 just to make sure. The bearings are nice and tight on there, there was no signs of any bearings spinning. The bearings certainly haven't been spinning in the housing. Okay, so this is really going to rev now. I'm standing to one side of it. Obviously, I've got no. Right, that's still 2,000 RPM and those bearings are sweet as a nut, very smooth. No roughness at all in there. 
when I put this back into the machine, it, it goes down that way. It's no good hammering on that face here to put it in. You need to knock it in on that outer part of the bearing. But that outer part of the bearing pushes onto that part, and that's the tight bit there. You don't want to put any load on the centre part of the bearing. I've got no bearing bush here that I can machine down, and I'll use that as a drift just to knock that in. I just machine it out of that face and then take a little bit off the UD. I think it's cast iron, I'm not sure. It's, I don't think it'll be hard. I change a lot of bearings at work, wheel bearings in cars, and I often keep the outer tracks in this cast just to use this space as when pressing, but also make good parallels because that, that ground size are a lot more accurate than. Three and a half mil to come off there. Make sure that's slightly smaller than the bearing so that'll do the job. And that fits in there so it'll knock the bearing all the way home with that. So it's just knocking on top of there because it'll damage the bearings. Nice and straight. Then just gently work your way around. This will be better off. Stripping down the press, but it's going in quite nicely. You should take your time with it. If you have a change once the bearing hits a circlip, that's it. See that? That's starting to bounce now, so that's all the way down. A little retaining plate goes onto there. That feels absolutely gorgeous, that bearing. Right, there's nothing the matter, the matter with that. When I'm up here, I'm just going to test this bearing here. It does feel good, but I'm going to run the motor up just to make sure it's not that. Um, I'll find a way of pulling tension on the end carefully, run that one up. Right, so if we keep the, the bit of tension on with that. Right, that's up the full charge, full speed. Nothing the matter with it. I know what some people have done with a VFD motor like that, do away with that. 
you just have a pull at each end because you've got a, a good speed control on the with the VFD. If you look on the the pulley, that is some sort of chatter marks on the sides. There's one or two ding marks like that. It's, that's not causing it, but there is a definite definite mark there. You bastard! Ah, there is a definite mark there. It's marked there. It's not marked there. It's not exactly a top class pulley, it's a cast iron pulley. They've squeezed a lot into a short depth so they have very very thin thin webs on it. Little woodruff keys in there. All the faces is nice and clean. I haven't finished the socket off yet so I can't tighten this nut on properly and the pulley's a hell of a good fit anyway Right, I think I'll put a belt on and give it a try. I'll use the, the tooth belts, the original belts. And high speed, which is that one. Right, the moment of truth. When you look slowly, the pulley has got a little wobble on it. Well, whatever I've done, fix the back that thing. All I've done is clean it and put it back together. Try one here down from there. Come on, John. Definitely, definitely improved it. I don't know what I've done to improve, but it's certainly Right, so they're nipped up and that bearing feels. You just put that upside down, John. It should be that way up so the nuts at the top, you thick twat. I tell you one thing, man, you've made a really good job of installing the bastard thing upside down. <laughs> 